Good morning. Back in the early 80s, I was in my early 20s. And I worked at St. Mary Magdalene Parish with my best friend. We were co-youth ministers up there. And we did that for a number of years. I remember the first year that we worked there, there was a stretch of 33 days that we worked straight without a single day off. Not one day off. Now I say that not to pat myself on the back and say what a hard worker I am. I say that because I was young and naive and didn't know how to schedule my time right. So our pastor, who was Father Paul Henry at the time, and many of you know him from doing mass up here, um, he pulled us into the office and he sat us down. And he said, I understand you've worked a lot the past month. And he said, tell me what's on your schedule this week coming up. And we told him everything that we were scheduled. And he thought about it and he said, cancel it all. Cancel everything. And we're like, but what about cancel everything? We canceled everything. He says, you guys are heading towards burnout. You need your time away. He said, go have fun separately. Don't even talk to each other this week. Go do what's fun, relax, recharge. And I'm forever grateful to him for doing that and recognizing that. In last week's gospel, if you remember it, Jesus sends the apostles off in pairs, two by two. And he gives them three instructions. One is to heal the sick. One is to drive out demons. And the third is to preach repentance. In today's gospel, we have the apostles coming back to report to Jesus from that. We don't know what the time frame was in between. Was it days? Was it weeks? Was it months? We, we don't know that. But we know that when they come back, Jesus looks at them and recognizes how exhausted they are, how hard they had been working. And he says, come on, we're going to get away. You haven't eaten. You haven't slept. Let's go. We're going to get out of here so you guys can rest. And he takes them where they can recharge their batteries from the Heavenly Father through Christ's presence. They're recharged, their faith is strengthened, their bodies are rejuvenated, so they can go back out there and work even harder. Now, you've often heard me say this, that by virtue of our baptism, we are all disciples of Christ. Whether we want to or not, we are. And in that sense, we have all been given certain gifts and talents to use to build up God's kingdom here on earth. In Jeremiah, we hear the words, I, I knew you in the womb, I formed you before you were born. Those talents and gifts were placed in us long before we were born. And they're particular to each one of us. And all our Heavenly Father says, use them to serve my people and build up my kingdom. So what do those talents look like? There are as many different gifts and talents as there are people in the world. Maybe your ministry from God is to be a good parent, to raise your children in the Christian faith, or a grandparent to do the same thing, or a friend. Or maybe you're called to be a minister at work by setting an example of what and who Christ is. Maybe you're called to serve people that are in hospitals, nursing homes, homebound. Maybe you're called to serve people that are homeless or in prison. We each have our own gifts and talents. We don't have to be the Superman that I am going to save the world. No, we use what we have, the simpleness of our lives, to spread Christ's message, to build up his kingdom. Sounds easy but it's pretty difficult when you think about it. And it can be exhausting. Think of the role of a parent with small children. Think of the, how much that demands. All of those ministries that I mentioned demand a lot. And it can be draining on us. It can be very difficult 
on us to continue and burn out in our Christian faith is certainly a possibility. And we have to be aware of that. We have to be conscious of that. Unless we're lucky enough to somebody that can recognize it and say, hey, you need to slow down. But for the most part, we have to be aware of our own abilities. Now, the end of September, I'm going on a four-day silent retreat because I need that to recharge. That's what I've found in my life that that's what I need. I am well, well aware that that is not for everybody because of some people can't do it because of scheduling, because of challenges, because of obligations, or even being afraid of sitting quietly for four days. Well aware of that. But I'm also well aware that every one of us can take five minutes out of our day to turn off the phone, turn off the TV, sit quietly in the presence of our loving Father and say, Father, I present myself to you, speak to me. You don't have to pray. You don't have to think about anything. Allow our Heavenly Father to penetrate your heart for those five minutes, then maybe 10 minutes, then maybe 30 minutes. Our Heavenly Father wants us to sit quietly with Him. We live in a busy world. We know that. We, we've got things coming at us left and right all the time. He's asking us to carve out a little time for Him to speak to us. Can we try that? <laughs> My dear friends, we have to take care of ourselves because we're, we are no good to other people if we burn out and we aren't able to minister well. Amen.